darling. This is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and you're listening to Music Connection Magazine. Cool. So let, let's get into it. Um, so uh, tell me, what does Halloween mean to you? Well, it means uh, a lot of money. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, that's a joke. Well, it's not really a joke, but um, I mean, it's always been my favorite holiday, honestly, since I was a kid. Um, my family owned a costume shop, and so I grew up in the Halloween costume business, so Halloween was always the craziest time of year, and believe me, it still is, and I, I, I love it. I think it's the best holiday. It's like no yeah. gift, gifts to buy for anybody, no dinners to make, you know, for your relatives. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you just dress up and have fun. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so speaking uh, about when you were younger, um, what was your favorite horror-themed toy to play with? Oh, when I was a kid, um, really where all, all the other little girls uh, had Barbies, I had ordered the um, Revco model kits of, of um, or the Aurora model kits, excuse me, I was thinking of the car, uh, Aurora model kits of Frankenstein, the Mummy, Wolfman, um, okay. all of those people. So I spent a lot of time making model kits of those and and uh I was I was definitely way into the horror themed stuff even as a child. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well that, I mean it, it's unusual but um I like it. I'm into that as well. I know my younger brother is as well. Um Yeah, it was kind of funny as a girl. I there were no other girls that I knew that were into that. So I couldn't yeah. get anybody to play with me. It was very sad. Uh, I, I could imagine. I could imagine. But, but, but did you? I mean, were you able to connect with some of the some of the guys that were into that? Um, well, I was kind of a, a nerd, so I was off in my own little world and didn't really connect at that time with anybody. I was, I was playing along in horror fantasy land there, there by myself. Right. Okay. Okay. I see. Well, let me ask you this: um, Which horror films helped shape you in becoming the queen of scream? Hmm, I I would say the very first horror movie I saw, which was House on Haunted Hills, um, okay. starring Vincent Price, right. um, rocked my world. It changed my whole life. I went from like, uh, uh, I don't know, just uh, I, it kind of, what, you know, just woke me up. It was, all of a sudden, there were horror films I'd never seen one. I was fascinated with it. I, I was both repelled and fascinated at the same time because I was like in right. second grade and I remember having recurring nightmares over and over, but I couldn't get Vincent Price out of my head. So I went to see every movie that he was in, which in those days were all the old Roger Corman films that were kind of loosely based on the Edgar Allan Poe movies, right. uh, poems, excuse me, and stories, and mm-hmm. um, uh, like Tomb of Lygia and, and uh, The Raven and all, all these various movies. And um, it just changed my whole outlook to everything. I, I began reading Famous Monsters magazine, and I got into the model kit making of horror, you know, icons, and um, I stuck with it kind of all my life, you know, Um, something I just really, uh, you you know, when you have that moment and you're a kid and you see something and you go, oh, my God, I love this. Right. So it was that moment. So I always think of that movie when I think of, of, um, you know, what what turned me into a, a horror geek. I got you. Okay, okay. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, I know you worked for K-Rock for a little bit. Um, yeah. How was it How was it working over there? It was awesome. I mean, my, my other love besides horror is music. And, right, um, I noticed that. Man, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, you may know, a lot of my friends are musicians, and I really like to hang with kind of a music crowd, and, and okay. uh, it's such a huge part of my life. So I... Um, Working at K-Rock was awesome because I, I got to kind of work with uh, Rodney Bingenheimer in that I got to go around to every club in L.A. for the whole, you know, a section of the, eight, the the late 70s and the early 80s where, like, new wave music was just happening. So I got to go to yeah. every club and see bands that were brand new, nobody had seen before. I mean, Talking Heads, the Go-Go's, okay. the Pretenders, you know, I mean, they were just all starting to happen here in Hollywood, and um, then I got to go into K-Rock and actually play them. There were no restrictions on what you could play. And, okay. I mean, just, I remember one of, um, one of the first songs I played that hadn't been heard, I got it from Rodney, was uh, from the Shags. It was Halloween, it's Halloween okay. from the Shags. Oh, my God. And, and it was, 
you know, combining Halloween and music, and it was so awesome. And, you know, of course, I don't know if you've ever heard that song, but probably the worst song ever made, kind of like the movies I play. Uh, oh, wait, did uh-huh. I say that? Um, <laughs> but anyway, it was so happening and so hot right then. It was just one band after another coming out, and I got to go see them, and then I got to get a recording and play it on the air. So it was really, really one of the greatest times in music, I think, ever. I think I think I skipped the whole damn 70s. I went directly from the 60s to the 80s. Um, uh, for me, the 70s okay. were just, with, with a very few exceptions, the 70s was kind of just this uh, dead zone for music. Okay. Okay. In my opinion, that's my opinion. But and there were exceptions. There were, there were some few good artists then and songs, but in general, name a couple artists that you like from the seventies. Oh my God, I, I don't think I can. I'd have to look <laughs> through. I'd have to look through a thing and go, oh, okay, that one's not so bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, so let me ask you this: um, How did you get started doing the movie Macabre? Um, I started locally again in L.A. It was right right around the time, um, not long before I did the gig at K-Rock. Um, I started, um, I was in the Groundlings, which is a comedy improv group here in L.A., still going on. Okay. Uh, that turned out a million and one different actors from Pee Wee Herman and right. Phil Hartman to, to you know, uh, oh, my God, a million and one different actors there in Saturday Night Live now. They practically populate the damn show with groundlings. Okay. And um I was in that group and heard about it heard about an interview for a local television station and I wasn't in a uh, you know, wasn't in a financial position to turn down any auditions at that time. Definitely. So I went, I was able to get I, I got the part. Amazingly they had a gigantic open call and nice. got the part. A friend of mine, Robert Redding, helped me design the costume. Went on TV. I, th- I honestly thought this is the most ridiculous thing. Here I am. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, doing like this Valley Girl character I had from the Groundlings. I'm dressed as some kind of a vampire, and I'm showing really crappy movies that nobody wants to see. And, uh, this is not going to last long. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, here it is, 35 years later. I'm still doing it. I know. I know. Amazing. Amazing. A trip. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to mention to you just a, a few, a couple music things that I've done, and, and of course yeah. the Hulu show, Hulu show coming up, which is the most important thing. October night. Oh my God, my cat is chewing my shoes. Stop! Stop! <laughs> 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 my cat is just like chewing the crap out of my shoes here. Wow. Um, okay. Um, one thing was the Ryan Adams video that I just did last month called "Give Me Something Good," the tune okay. from his new album. Um, was that the Ryan. one on your website? I'm sorry. Was that the one uh, on your on your website? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ryan, oh, okay. Ryan Adams just recorded that. We, we did that together a month ago. I met him yeah. through my accountant. We share a, the same accountant, so it was okay. so bizarre. Um, he called me up and asked me if I wanted to do this. Uh, he's really into pinball, so we actually talked a lot of pinball first, and then later he said, "Would you like to do a music video with me?" And I was like, "Sure, that'd be great." I, I thought I was just going to do a little walk on it. It's kind of it ended up being kind of centered around Elvira, which is really awesome because I love the song. Right. And um, definitely no, I like that yeah. song too. That's what, what um, I remember. I was checking out your site the other day, so I was like, yeah, this is a pretty dope song. Yeah, just yeah. It just uh, came out within the last uh, I think in September or something, maybe the end of August. Yeah. But um, so I did that. That was really really cool. And then Ryan kind of helped me out by. Um, shooting a little bit of footage after we shot the video. He uh, and his crew shot some footage that I used for my new song that Fred okay. Schneider from the V-52s wrote called Two okay. Big Pumpkins. And, okay. And that's out right now. It just came out October 8th, and then I um, got a hold of my friend Jack White, who um, used Third Man Records to make the 7-inch um, the vinyl and okay. um, also put together the music video so nice. it was really great um that's it was cool. so awesome i just saw jack the other night he actually came i'm i'm doing a big show at not scary farm right now right i know and about they do that this gigantic show and um, jack white came down along with um uh josh homme from queens of stone age my two favorite uh recording artists right there okay and so 
They came down, saw the show, plus Jake Shears from Scissor Sisters, along with Pee Wee Herman. And, um, oh, he he showed up. Yeah, yeah, they all they all oh, came okay. down together. It was all just, It was awesome. That was just a few nights ago. Nice. So, nice. Um, so cool. anyway, Jack has really helped me out. He did my last my last song that was the theme song for my last TV series, which was syndicated in 2012. Jack had the Black Bells record a song for me for the opening sequence of the TV show. And okay. he's just been fantastic at uh, helping me out. He's an amazing, amazing guy. And obviously, in my book, number one musician on the planet. Cool. That sounds good. So I, I know you mentioned a little bit about uh, 13 Nights of Elvira. Um, and how did that come about with you and Hulu? Um, we we had... Uh, um, Worked with a person on my syndicated movie, Macabre series, that was in 2012, who who um, had worked at a company that brought it out on DVD, and then he moved over to Hulu, and he it, his name was Griffin Gmelch, G M E L C H, but he he thought that um, it would make a great idea for Hulu, and we did too. We had a couple meetings about it, and then uh, Griffin began pitching it over there. And it took a couple of years, but they finally picked up on it. Um, okay. I found out I have some big fans over at Hulu, which was great. And oh, we kind sure, of pulled everywhere. this together at the last minute. It was a really, it was a really like all of a sudden. Can you do this? With it? it was going to be 31 movies, and there was not time to do 31. And right. it was, and it was almost impossible to find 31 that we we uh, could use because the right. hardest part of hosting horror movies is getting the movies. Right. Um, you know, people go, why don't you do more? And it's because the movies are unaffordable generally if they're owned by a right. group like Sony or Universal or whatever. They're mm-hmm. uh, nobody could afford them. Right. Not not me anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but uh, anyway, we were able to get a great group of movies, mostly from Charles Band, who did Puppet Masters and um, uh, oh my God, Oblivion. A lot of really kind of perfect movies for Elvira to host. Yeah. So, yeah. So we were able to get those movies, threw together 13, bam, bam, wham, bam. And, That's uh, cool. and they're coming out on the 19th, starting 19th all through the 31st. The 31st, right. I've seen that. That's cool. That's cool. So um, talking about, like, your setup and, and, and you know, the, the time frame that it takes you to get ready and, and, you know, put Elvira on instead of Cassandra, how long does that take you uh, to do? It takes me uh, exactly an hour and a half. I I, hour and a half? Okay. Do it, I have it down to like a science. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that every day this last several weeks, actually since the end of August. So okay, I have well, it. Well, that's cool. Do it in my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. So uh, talking a little bit about music, um, I know you have a few more releases out there. Do you plan on releasing another album? I know you mentioned another song, but another album. Um, I've been talking a little bit to a few people, again, Fred Schneider, about some more, like, dance music stuff, and I've been talking okay, to Okay, like Ryan. EDM? I'm sorry? Like 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 EDM, like electronic dance music? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We've actually been cool. talking about a couple of those um, uh, with some people who are, who are into that, and um, okay. also talking to my to um, uh, Ryan about doing some music. He's, he's interested in doing some Elvira music, so I've been talking to him right. about it. That's cool. uh, and it's so funny. I should mention my my uh, nephew is um, once in a while I talk to him about doing some music. He actually is uh, with Black Eyed Peas. Okay. His name is Damian Leroy, and he writes a lot of their music and produces it. So. Okay. I've been talking to him, to him about doing something too. So we'll see if we can get that together in this next year. Definitely, definitely. So let me ask you this, Elvira. What what's next for you? I know once Halloween is done on the thirty first. How are you going to keep it going? What 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 do you have on your plate? Um, my next big project. Well, right after the thirty first, the next day, I'm at um, one of the biggest pop culture conventions in the country called Kamikaze. Um, That's right. Here, here in L.A. Yeah. So for three days, I'll be I'll be at Kamikaze right after Halloween, um, and I, I hope I can still like function. Uh, anyway, and then uh, oh, about a week later, I go to um, Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro, because okay. oddly, Brazil is my second biggest market after the U.S. Wow. Um, I okay. do a lot of appearances around the world. I do 
like Australia and England, mostly English-speaking places. But for some reason, Brazil, they love me down there. That's so cool. I'll, I'll be making my first appearance down there. And then I'm going to begin um, doing doing my um, um, working really hard, concentrating on doing an animated project. Um, okay. Either film or television, but an animated Elvira, because I've always thought that Elvira is kind of a cartoon character anyway, and she'd make a perfect perfect okay. subject for animation. Yep. Nice. So cool. that's, that's cool. going to be my new project. That's cool. Year. Definitely yeah, and, and I've also that. been working on my autobiography, which I hope to wrap up this year. Um, okay. That's another long-term project that takes a lot of time and energy. I think I have it about half done. Okay. But, um, looking to finish that. So that's going to be as soon as I, as soon as I get done with Halloween, and I'm going to start into it. those things. I hope Got hopefully it. I'll have like a, 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 you know, a day off or something. That would be awesome. Definitely, definitely. Okay, well, um, we're we're winding down towards the end. Um, do you have any final thoughts for for your listeners and for your viewers? Well, just to wish them all a happy Halloween 